Hey, how's it going? It is me, Nuru. Welcome back to my channel. Yes, it is past mid-January when I'm filming this. Yes, I'm still going to do my December wrap-up. And then later I'm going to do a review of my story graph to look at some of the stats and breakdowns and fun facts, numbers, all of that um, for 2021. So without further ado, December, I read five books. And yeah, it's a pretty solid reading month. I started off with reading this book, a five-star read, and I've talked about this a little bit in my last video. This is A Lover's Discourse by Xiaolu Guo, and I really enjoyed this book. This book essentially follows a 20-something woman who has lost her parents. She moves to London to get her PhD, I believe, and this is like in the post-Brexit era. It follows her meeting this German-British man and their relationship. It talks a lot about, you know, trying to find a place of your own in this world, trying to find a sense of home, and yeah, just the development of a relationship. Um, but beyond that, it really focuses on language and translation, how one phrase translates into another, and this idea of reproduction in terms of reproduction of work and forgery. Her PhD thesis is about these painters in the Chinese countryside that reproduce famous Renaissance, um, you know, Western art historical paintings and why that is maybe not considered a um, like respected practice or why it's not, you know, given the same flowers as works produced in any of those artists workshop when they were originally first made so it talks a lot about yeah this idea of reproduction and translation and where those two differ and where those two meet um, very interesting the title comes from a roland Barthes book and i haven't read it but i would really love to i think this book is really interesting and a really good fit for someone that maybe has a background in art criticism, art theory, um, film theory, literary theory, any of that. If you're a nerd, this is a book for you. Um, I really enjoyed it. Then I listened to Best of Me by David Sedaris on audio. I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks recently just because I've been knitting a sweater for my brother for like a while now, maybe four months. Um, but it's just nice to listen to something and knit and yeah this was amazing i mean i think i gave it 3.5 stars uh, just because since it is like the best of me it's a collection of his best pieces i've i'd read some of them already through calypso and me talk pretty one day um so if you're looking to start with sedaris this would probably be a great place to start i mean he's as witty as ever it's really interesting it has some of his um, pieces where he talks about animals and I found that really cool as well but yeah a lot of repetition um, but overall enjoyable he's witty he's biting and his observations are just so keen like he has such a sharp eye for these sorts of things so that was that then I listened to another book on audio this was people we meet on vacation by Emily Henry this follows a pair of best friends that take a summer vacation together every year. The past couple of years they haven't done that, they had a sort of falling out and this is about the rekindling of that friendship and the rekindling of maybe something more. It's just very fun, very sweet. I really just enjoyed this. I think that um, compared to the first book, and I don't want to compare her books, but yeah, I just found this one much more believable. I was more invested in the story. The characters were really strong and interesting. Um, just a good time read. Like if you're listening, if you're looking for a good audiobook to listen to, especially in the winter ones, you just want something cozy and fluffy. Um, this is a good one. I enjoyed it a lot and it definitely made me weep. I said that, I think. Yeah, I cried. What about it? This was a five-star read as well. 
Next, I read One to Watch on audio by Kate Stamen London, I believe is the author's name. This is another romance novel that essentially follows the premise of The Bachelor, um, or The Bachelorette, I should say. This, you know, fashion blogger, this plus size fashion blogger is one day watching The Bachelorette with her friends and is like, why do all these women look the same? And then through her internet following influencer, clout she gets chosen to be the next bachelorette and it's her uh, um she's like the first plus size bachelorette and it essentially follows her journey to find love and yeah very interesting i think that it if you love reality tv like me you would like this book i think that again this is just a good time read if you're looking for something to say something you know, insightful about body politics. This is not it. It's very like basic representational politics. Also, it mentions like all these celebrities watching uh, The Bachelorette. It's really cringe because Chris Evans is a recurring character that's like thirsting after The Bachelorette. It's just like, he wouldn't do that, I don't think. I don't know him like that, but I don't think he would do that. Just found that very cringe and at some points it felt very self-serving like i understand like obviously i'm a big reality tv fiend and i know how exploitative these shows can be in terms of people's trauma and making stories out of you know hurtful events in people's life um, i get that i get that that's the premise of the book but at some points it, ju it just felt so like self-serving i don't know there were also a bunch of characters that did shitty things that are never like held accountable for their actions. I think the ending was a little bit abrupt. I think it just was like, yes, and everything's okay in the end, but it didn't feel earned. I feel like they could have really cut back on the exposition and introducing all these different characters and really taken time to develop a story. Also, it was so clear from the beginning who her like who she was going to end up with, who her main love interest was going to be. Um, and for a book that's like sort of using this premise, like you can do better than the TV show. We shouldn't have an obvious winner. I think that there could have been time taken to develop maybe at least one or two more storylines. Um, yeah. Also, there's more ways for the characters to be awful than to be fat phobic. I feel like that was overused. But other than that, I think that it was enjoyable. It was a good time read. Like, I'm not going to reread it ever, but that was fun. And then the final book that I read was Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Fraser. I gave this 4.5 stars, a damn near perfect book. I don't know why I didn't give it five stars, honestly. I don't know what that 0.5 was docked for, but this book is amazing. I think that in the realm of depressed woman books, I like this one because yes, she has that, you know, depression detached side to her as well, but I really enjoy how this leans into the mania. I really enjoy how this leans into the character's obsessive tendencies. So it follows this character who is a pizza girl she works at a pizza shop and she's pregnant um, one day she gets a call a pizza order from this older lady that's like in her mid 40s and just moved to town and she's like oh my god please help me out thank you so much and the pizza girl becomes obsessed with this lady like she just is in love with her she wants to just be around her and things escalate i think this was book <laughs> i think this book was so strong i really enjoyed it it was such a like quick read um and it's so interesting because all the supporting characters are so well developed as well like her mom and her boyfriend in this book they're lovely people and the main character is still kind of awful to them, but you get it, like you get why she's awful to them and you don't like her for it and you can tell she doesn't like herself for it. It's just amazing. This book is a wild ride. I feel like I should 
say some intelligent things about it beyond just complimenting it, but I don't have anything intelligent to say about it. I loved it. Good time, wild. Would love to see this as a movie. If you like the movie Ingrid Goes West with Aubrey Plaza, this book is for you. I think you would really enjoy this. It's very much the same sort of vibe. Yeah. So those were all the books I read in the last month of 2021. Let me switch over to my computer and we can talk stats, baby. We can talk numbers. Um, all right, so these are my reading stats for 2021. I read 54 books and my goal was to read 50. So that's awesome, met that goal. Um, and generally the mood of the books I read is reflective, emotional and challenging, which tracks like that makes sense to me with tense being the least read mood. Um, that's interesting. Most of the books are medium paced and then 9% of them were fast paced, which I find surprising. I don't remember what these fast paced books were. Um, and I read 19 slow books, which yeah, that makes sense to me. What are these fast books? I'm curious. Okay, Calypso. Um, I don't know if I would say this is fast paced. I mean, it's a short book. Nothing to see here. All right. Actor A.G. Brown, The Hating Game. Questionable, questionable categorizing of these as fast. Um, I don't know if I would agree. Uh, page number, mostly less than 300. That definitely tracks with 35% over 300 but less than 500 um yeah makes sense i could venture to guess that most of these are on audio um i read 30 percent non-fiction and 70 percent fiction which is not ideal i would hope to read at least a little bit more non-fiction maybe this year we can we can bump that up to 40 percent aim high right um, but yeah, I, I would hope to improve that a little bit. Um, 16 nonfiction books. And I think, again, most of these were on audio. Uh, then genres, mostly contemporary, followed by literary. I do think there's overlap between these. Um, then romance, and then LGBTQIA+, plus, nine. Yeah, all of this seems to make sense with poetry. I think I read any poetry. I guess maybe this is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous, categorized as poetry. Oh yeah, Islands of a Deep Hole in the Love. I read this on audio, um, I think, so I don't even remember. Like, I don't know what it looked like. Not that poetry has to look a certain way, but I sort of assumed it was short stories. Maybe it's both. Um, format, 43% print and 41% audio with 17% digital. I don't think this is entirely accurate. I think sometimes I just picked a cover that was similar to the cover I was reading. Um, I am trying to be more diligent about tracking format this year. And I would, I would assume that audio is probably my most used format just because it goes by so much faster. I read a lot of things on audio while I'm up and about like from cooking or I've taken up knitting as I mentioned um, so those are usually usually what I have on in the background or as I'm doing things um, yeah most read authors Talia Hibbert makes sense I read three of her books the Brown Sisters series followed by Beth O'Leary and Joan Didion David Sedaris I think I read three Sedaris I, I read Me Talk Pretty One Day Calypso and best of me but i think calypso was or sorry i think me talk pretty one day was 2019 probably huh okay so this is interesting my biggest reading month my best reading month was august i read six books and about 2000 pages and my worst reading month was october because i only read two books um i was going through stuff in october and only 750 pages. I don't think this is entirely accurate. I read four books in September, but it says I only read 515 pages 
I don't I don't think that's accurate. I think something is up with that. Um, this is the month I read The Three Cons and I had to ask for that book to be put on Storygraph and like the details to be put on Storygraph. So I think maybe that's missing its it's missing its um, page number. Maybe that's why, but yeah, very strange that that would be so low. I don't think that that's accurate. And I guess we read longer books in December because it's the only month that I read like the pages is higher than the number of books. I know it doesn't mean anything because the scales are completely different, but I guess this means like generally my books were longer. Like the page count is higher than every other month I read five books. Yeah. Why is this not on the line? That bothers me. Um, okay, star ratings, average rating of 4.01. That's funny. What's that 01? I think it's this 3.75 that I gave to a book, messing it all up. But yeah, I only rated 50 books. I think um, with nonfiction, I think with nonfiction, sometimes I find it hard to give the books a rating just because like if I learned something, I would want to give it five stars. And yeah, it's just hard. Like, what are you supposed to base it on? I think I tend to give most nonfiction five stars anyway, unless it's self-help then I'm a little bit critical. Um, as you should be for all types. I think this year I'm going to just not rate my nonfiction um, and only rate fiction because I want to. And I think it makes more sense to me. Um, but yeah, that's it. Let's, I want to take a look at September and see what was up with that page count. Let's select a month. Oh yeah. All right. What is this? How can I have read negative, negative pages? That doesn't make sense. What does this mean? What is this? Yeah, it won't, it won't give me more data on that, but I think that's why September looks funky. I mean, that that is not right. I did not read negative 149 pages. All right, those are all the books I read in the month of December, and those are the numbers for the books I read in 2021. Um, I'll link my story graph and my Goodreads down below. I'm kind of using both at the moment, um, so feel free to add me. I'll also link my bookstagram and my Twitter down below. Um, I don't really post that much on bookstagram, but I'm always online, so if you want to chat, message me um yeah other than that thank you so much for watching like comment subscribe all the things you can do on youtube and i will see you again very very soon in my next video okay bye